Uh, Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, fellow speakers, uh, my name's Mark and I'm a nicotine addict. Out and proud. I know I'm hooked, I know I'm addicted, I enjoy it. Uh, I've learned a few things today. Uh, I haven't really learned much about the health risks. I would doubt anybody in this room was unaware that smoking was potentially very bad for you. I have, however, learned, I have learned to my astonishment and surprise, because I'd never interpreted it this way before, that Bob Dylan's The Times They Are A-Changing is a call for the plain packaging of tobacco products. <laughs> that really was quite a revelation. I'm grateful to the other side for pointing that out for me. There is, with regard to the health issues, essentially, no doubt, no issue. If you consume cigarettes, any tobacco product, in the way that they are intended to be consumed, uh, as the other side said at the outset, you run a high chance of suffering ill health and a high chance of premature death. Lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, respiratory illnesses of all kinds, God knows what else, warts, nightmares, hair loss, smoking seems to cause virtually every affliction you can imagine. There might be at the margin some debate about the exact scale of this. I'm sure medics in the cancer field argue about exactly how colossal is the risk of lung cancer, but there's no debate in general, that this is a habit and a product that is bad for you. But guess what? My view, and I think the view of this side of the house, is that living long and having good health matters. But it's not the only thing that matters in life. We don't do everything in our lives just with, it, with an eye on making sure we can live that extra month, that extra year just to make sure that our health is as perfect as it can be. Because guess what? Fun can be dangerous. Pleasure can be dangerous. Pleasure can harm you. You have to make a trade-off yourself. Some examples were given. I don't need to go back too much over the rugby example. Uh, and Baron Swindley's right. There are potentially health benefits of playing sports to offset the risks. But when I was at Balliol College just over 20 years ago, a friend of mine was paralysed playing rugby for the Balliol College rugby team. People engage in all sorts of mad things that bring them pleasure. Mountain climbing, extreme sports, what's going through these people's minds? Uh, deciding to develop a career as a professional stuntman, absolutely madness. But fun can be, danger, can be dangerous and it can be fatal. Cigarettes and tobacco are a proposition of fun and pleasure. They're not good for you. The industry itself. I think this side of the house would readily accept that certainly in the 50s, and certainly going back a few decades, the tobacco industry was doing things that you could call morally reprehensible. They certainly were incredibly slow to admit any health risks of smoking, or indeed that nicotine is addictive. I am utterly persuaded that it is. But frankly, it is now so widely known that smoking tobacco is bad for you, it barely matters what the industry says anymore. If, if the tobacco industry came out and said, no, actually, if you smoke cigarettes, you will live long and prosper, nobody would believe them. It is established fact that it is bad for you, and the world has moved on. There are, of course, on cigarettes themselves now. If you weren't already informed enough, these warnings telling you that uh, it will cause you heart disease and all of the rest of it. Completely preposterous waste of space. Have you ever seen somebody go into a newsagent, buy a packet of cigarettes, look at it and say, geez, it causes cancer? Blimey, if only they labelled things more properly, I better you know, ask for my money back. But nevertheless, it's there, clear as day. Everybody knows it. That battle has been won. Who are the industry? This point has come up, and I think it's worth nailing it. If you believe that you want to condemn the chief executive of a major tobacco company, I think you have to also condemn anyone who seeks to make a living out of tobacco. You clearly have to condemn them. If you are a news agent in this country, most likely selling tobacco is your principal revenue stream. You are selling and making money and earning your living from a product that if consumed, as advertised on the tin, will cause you harm. If you are a tobacco farmer in the developing world, you are harvesting crops 
that you know will go into products that will cause serious health damage and potential loss of life to the people who consume it. As do opium farm farmers in Afghanistan, and we called them morally reprehensible. Well, I, I, you might call them morally reprehensible. If you want to condemn, I want you to be clear, and I'm glad you accept this on your side of the motion, that if you pass it, you are not just criticising the top bosses at PMI, you are criticising every tobacco farmer on planet Earth, you are criticising every news agent and every salesman on planet Earth who sells tobacco across the counter. You are probably also condemning anyone who ever responds politely to the request, have you got a spare cigarette, mate? They're also dealing in death. That is what you're being asked to, and thank you very much for clarifying that you agree with that definition. That's what you are being asked to support. Producing and selling a popular product to consenting adults, even if dangerous and even if addictive, is not of itself a morally reprehensible behaviour. I'll take it, sir. Um, you're saying it's consenting adults. The tobacco industry market children, not people who are living to be on the stand. Is that not morally reprehensible? I'm, just going to, I'm going to come on to the children thing. You've preempted. I've still got three minutes left. I can hand, easily handle that. Uh, if you're selling it to adults, I don't believe that you can say that that is morally reprehensible. I am an out and proud smoker, actually. Uh, it was raised in the floor debate that there are costs uh, accrued to the UK government by people smoking, but those costs are pretty small and pretty limited compared to the tax revenue. Even on the highest estimates of smoking-related diseases on the National Health Service, tobacco tax pays for it three or four times over, that sort of level. Smokers are net contributors. Uh, given we're all going to die early, we're probably the people who are going to defuse the pensions time bomb as well. It's uh, all of you non-smokers living forever and dying of nothing who are bankrupting the country. Uh, it's almost a form of tax avoidance, isn't it? Not smoking cigarettes, I guess. Uh, I'm doing my bit for the country. You're not. <laughs> With regard to kids and children, you can't ever make the world, you cannot make the world completely childproof. I support taking stronger action to actually punish and penalise people that sell cigarettes to youngsters. I would much prefer that as a ta tobacco control tactic. Really serious fines for news agents who sell to 13-year-old kids. Really serious fines, criminal prosecutions for proxy purchasing adults who go in and then pass on the cigarettes to kids. The other side haven't been very successful in that area. They want to instead bring in plain packaging. They want to regulate the colour schemes that adults are allowed to look at. Perhaps I feel so strongly about this because I am a white, middle-class, Oxbridge-educated, baptised in the Church of England, heterosexual male. The only minority I get persecuted for is my lifestyle choice to smoke cigarettes. But it is a choice. I don't believe the people providing me with that, with that product are reprehensible at all. In fact, they're innovating. They are hoping to bring to market more e-cigarettes, more heat-not-burn products, which could be considerably safer than conventional tobacco. They're struggling to bring these to market because they're not allowed to advertise them. So they're actually being held back in terms of the innovation that they have. I've only got, I've only got 30 seconds to go. Uh, what I find reprehensible is persecuting people, a minority of 20% in this country, for a lifestyle choice. We don't do that in many other areas of our life. It is a lifestyle choice. It is a dangerous one. It is a risky one but it is one that we should allow adults to take and allow the tobacco industry to provide for. So I say if you are even thinking of going on the other side of the debate, you don't need to be a smoker to agree with me. I'm not asking you to light up. I am asking you to lighten up. Live and let live. Or if you believe all the health warmings, live and let me die. <laughs> Show some tolerance, social open-mindedness. Allow that adults make different decisions about how they wish to live their life, and health is not always the complete ace of trumps. The liberal, tolerant, open-minded thing to do this evening, ladies and gentlemen, is to defeat this wretched motion. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, I beg to propose.